Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at how to create or how to use collections in Adobe Lightroom 4. Now, um, I asked this question actually out on social media. I asked on my Facebook fan page and on my uh, Google Plus page. I was kind of looking for a topic to show in Lightroom. I hadn't done a Lightroom episode in a long time, and I was just like, what do people want to know how to do? I got lots of great responses, both on Facebook and Google+, and just because I didn't use your topic today doesn't mean I won't use it in the future. But actually, it was Scott Dolan on Google+, who asked how to use collections um, you know, for a large catalog of photos without getting duplicates, how to be basically just how to manage your photos better. And I thought that would be a good topic to cover today that would cover a broad range of Lightroom users, whether you're just starting with Lightroom or whether you've been a Lightroom user for years and years and you just maybe wanna see a couple tips and tricks. So let's dive in. Of course, we're gonna start out from the beginning. And there are really three, maybe four types of cat or collections inside Lightroom. And I say four because Lightroom 4 kind of introduces a new way to do things with your books and slideshows and things like that that kind of work like collections, but not quite. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so first of all, I just created a catalog this morning. Um, this catalog has uh, photos from two shoots in it. It's got uh, 81 pictures all together. It's got the Amanda shots I did at Photoshop World, and it's got the Samantha shots I did uh, recently as well in my studio. And uh, these are just in the folders these are the actual images in the folders on my hard drive. So they have, they are not in any of the collections yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the Amanda folder and just kind of scroll through some of the images. And you might start to see some of them with a blue label, a blue color label. And that's uh, simply by hitting, I believe it's the number eight on the keyboard. No, nine on the keyboard. So if you hit the number nine on the keyboard, that will mark it with a blue label, eight marks it with a green label, so forth and so on. But anyway, the blue label represents while we were standing there after we uh, took these photos, she kind of quickly scanned through them and I had her mark the ones that she liked best with the blue label. So these, you know, basically these are her favorites. And um, that's great because I might go through and mark different favorites that are mine. So I usually let the client have blue and mine are green. So for example, I like that photo. So I would use the number eight on that one to mark it with green. Uh, kind of like that one as well. Number eight, mark it as green and um, so forth and so on. So that way we end up with uh, these different selections in the same folder um, that the client picked, that I picked, so forth and so on. But what if I wanted to just group certain ones together? That's what collections are. Uh, some people like to refer to them as albums. Some people like to use the analogy of iTunes playlist, you know, where you have all your music in your library, but you separate it out by playlist of what you want to listen to at any given time. It doesn't duplicate the music. It doesn't uh, delete the music when you delete something out of a playlist. So if you think about that analogy, if you're an iTunes user, this would be kind of the same thing. You make collections for groupings of photos that you want to use or, or work with together so that you can keep them together without moving them into different folders or without having to do anything that will actually manage the file itself. So that's what collections are all about. So what I'm going to do quickly is I want to make a, an Amanda's favorites folder or collection. So uh, I should say collection, not folder. So let's go ahead and go to attribute here. And what I want to do is simply say, give me all the ones that are blue in this folder. So that will just, it just isolated them down to the, just the ones that she liked. So now I'm going to select those. And what I can do at this point is go over to my collections button or, or area here button. And there's a plus sign. And when I click the plus sign, it's going to give me the ability to create a collection, smart collection, which we're going to get to and a collection set, which is simply a folder of collections. So I'm going to say, create a collection. And I can call it whatever I want. So we'll call it Amanda's favorites or faves It's fine. And top level means put it on the top level of everything else. Don't bury it inside of a folder or a collection set. 
and more, most importantly, include the ones I just selected. I selected all of the ones that were blue so that it will automatically put them in. If I didn't have this checked or I didn't have any selected or all of them selected, then I'd have to drag them in later. So we're just going to say create that collection. And so out of the 56 photos that were in the folder, nine are now in a new collection. So they're in basically in both places because they're always in the actual folder because those are the real photos. The collection is like a playlist, a grouping of those photos. So there we are, we have our nine. And if we ever wanna get back to all of them, we have all 56 here. So now let's say that I wanted uh, Amanda's, uh, or this is Amanda's faves, I wanted Terry's favorites of Amanda. So let's go and go back to attributes. Let's turn off the blue, let's go to green. So far, these are my favorites. So I'll select all of those. And now we'll make another new collection and we'll call it uh, Terry's favorite Amanda shots. All right, again, it's gonna include the ones that I've selected. Okay, so now I've got my three, she's got her nine, I've got all 56, if I ever wanna get back to any of those, and now I can begin working. That's kind of how I work with collections manually. Basically just uh, select, you know, narrowing down a selection and then adding that selection to the uh, collection itself. Now, if I ever want to add an additional photo to a manual collection, let's go back to the 56. Let's say I kept looking and I found uh, another one that I liked. So let's say I'm gonna go ahead and mark that one uh, with a green label. Now it doesn't do anything. It just marked it as a green label. I still only have three in my favorites and she only still has nine. So just by now going back to the folder and making that my choice doesn't do anything to the collection unless I pick it up and drag it into the collection. Now it's four in that collection versus just three. So that's how manual collections work. Once you generate them from the selection, it's up to you that from that point to manage which ones are in there and which ones aren't. So if I said, you know, I kind of don't like this one as much as I thought I did, and I press my delete or backspace key, then that one goes away from the collection. So now there are only three, but of course they're all still in the original folder because you're never deleting the original files from the actual folder. You're just taking them in and out of collections. Okay, so that's how manual collections work. Now let's take a look at something I use all the time. Let's take a look at smart collections. Now a smart collection is dynamic. That means that you don't have to do anything once you create the initial criteria. Once you're done with that, it will update the collection automatically for any photos that match that criteria. So for example, uh, both in the Amanda folder and in the Sam folder, I've gone through and marked some of these with five stars. Like, oh, those are my favorite favorites of all time, you know, whatever, just using that as an example. So, you know, I could manually find the five stars and drag them into a collection for each folder, but I don't wanna to have to do that. I want it to do it for me. And I could do the same thing with a green color label as well. So I'm gonna say, <clears throat> create a smart collection and it doesn't really matter what photo you had selected or what folder you're in or any of that because it's going to build it based on your criteria. And I'm gonna call it Terry's Favorites. So these are my favorite favorites of all time. It doesn't matter which shoot it's from, these are my best. And so rating is equal, greater than or equal to five stars. Now, you can do more criteria. You could say it's not only has to be greater than or equal to a set number of stars, but you can add a plus sign and say that it has to be, you know, uh, maybe I only want the favorites from, um, oh, I don't know, the favorites that were shot, I'm guessing here, that also have a, I'm really drawing a blank here. Uh, <laughs> let's say that we're shot with a particular camera. So I could say the camera is my uh, D4. So now those would be my favorites shot with a D4. So now what that is probably going to do is it's going to pick these, the Sam shots, because those were in studio with my D4, 
But with my uh, with the Amanda shots, I shot those with a D7000, so those would not get picked up. So just again, you can create whatever criteria you want and just make sure that it's all, any, or none. So that's very important. So if I say all, it has to be both five stars and shot with a D4. If I said any, then it would be basically the you know lots of pictures. It would be any that were shot that have a five star rating, or any that were shot with a D4 that don't necessarily have a five star rating. So that's the difference between any and all. Okay, but we're going to get rid of the D4 criteria, and we're just going to say create, and that will basically create that new smart collection that has both um, you know shots from both shoots. And again, anything with a five-star rating. So now what I mean by that keeps up dynamically, if I go back to the SAM folder and I find another favorite, um, let's say that I really like this one, and I make it a five-star, when I go back to that collection, it's already in there because it's saying, oh, you said this was a five-star shot? It's a five-star shot, therefore it's in the collection. If I now in the collection, I say, well, this one's maybe a four star, not a five star. It immediately removes it from the collection because it no longer matches the criteria. So that's the difference between a manual collection and a smart collection. Smart collections update automatically. All you have to do is make sure the criteria is right. And manual collections, you drag and drop whatever pictures in or delete whatever pictures out you don't want. And you are basically manually adjusting the collection. Now, last but not least, and this is one that's often overlooked. Let's say that I want to, you know, I, I'm heading, I, I want to update my wall in my studio and I want to add some new prints. And I am randomly going through finding pictures that I want to print um, at a service provider or print on my own printer. So rather than me having to remember which ones they are, I kind of want them in a collection but I don't want it to be permanent. Meaning, I'm not, you know, once I'm done printing, I don't need that collection anymore. And yeah, I could create it manually, drag them in, print, and then delete the collection. But there's a faster, easier way that's built in. It's called a quick collection. And it's permanent. It's already here. You don't have to create it. It's all the way at the top. Unfortunately, it's, uh, I think it should be in the collection area, but it's in the catalog area. And it's called quick selection. And right now there are zero photos in it. That's because I have not added anything to the quick collection. Now, how do you add something to the quick collection? Do you drag it in? No, there's an easier way. As you hover over each photo, you might notice there's a little circle in the upper right-hand corner of your thumbnails. That little circle is the quick collection circle. Now, I, I can, you know, of course, click on that circle to add a photo to the quick collection, but I find that it's, to me it's faster just to select the photos I want and hit the letter B for quick collection. <laughs> okay, so we hit the letter B. That will add it to the quick collection. It will also darken the circle so you know which ones are in the quick collection. And uh, maybe I want to print this one, which wasn't a favorite, but I just kind of want to print that one. Now, and I can go to a different folder. It doesn't all have to be from the same folder, same collection, same anything. You can go to any one you want. And if you decide you want that one in a quick collection, it goes in a quick collection. You want this one in a quick collection, hit the letter B, it goes in a quick collection. You want this one in a quick collection, click the circle, it goes in a quick collection. So now, if I go to quick collection, those five are in there. And again, that collection is only as temporary as those are marked for the quick collection. So I can now select all those, export them, print them, do whatever I want. And as soon as I'm done with them, I, I go to the quick collection, select them all, and just hit the letter B again, which is the opposite. It toggles on or off the quick collection. So I've hit the letter B. They're now all gone from the quick collection. They're back where they always were. They did not move them. It did not do anything to them. A quick collection is, I want to make a quick collection that's not permanent. And I can grab those photos from anywhere in my catalog and just add them to the quick collection, make a slideshow, print, a book, uh, you know, a web gallery, whatever I want, and then imprint, and that's what I get. So when I'm done, just take them out of the quick collection just by unmarking them with the B. All right, so that's a quick look at how collections work. Now I did mention one other kind of collection that's new in Lightroom 4, 
And for this, uh, let's go to Amanda's favorites. So let's say that I select all of these. And, uh, and again, this is going to be a very boring book because they're all the same photos. Uh, let's actually, let's do it a different way. Let's select all of these. And let's go back and get some more. Let's add some more to uh, Terry's favorites. It's going to select that one, that one. And by the way, you can't add a photo to a collection twice. So if I select one of these and it's already in that collection, it's not going to add it again. As a matter of fact, uh, yeah, let's drag it into, there we go. All right, so those are, you know, now been added to this collection. So I've got those and I've got Terry's favorites and I've got Amanda's favorites. And now what I want to do is actually I want to make some more in Terry's favorites. That's what I was trying to do. So let's uh, star rate some more of these. How many do I have in there now? Oh, that's right, because one is now a four star. So let's put that back as a five star. Let's make this one a five star. Let's make that one a five star. And so now Terry's favorites has a good mix of both uh, shots from both shoots. So now let's say I select all of these and I go to the book module. And by the way, the I, I highly recommend that if you're going to make a book in Lightroom 4, that you do create a collection and more importantly, organize the photos in the order you want them in your book in that collection. It will save you a ton of time when you're making your book. All right, so um, I've got... Yeah, of course, I would go in, start you know, arranging the pages, start doing what I want to do for the book itself. And we're not building a book here today. I just wanted to use this as an example. But what I want to do is now say create a saved book. And when I do that, um, Amanda, Sam, book. You will note that it's kind of creating, even though it's creating a book, it's going to look like a collection. As a matter of fact, it's even going to add it in the collection area. And what that's really just keeping track of is the photos that you told it to use for that particular kind of project. So now when you're creating a slideshow, same thing, create a slide, a save slideshow. When you're creating a web gallery, same thing, create a save web gallery. It will add those in the collection area so that you will always be able to keep track of which photos you're using for which kind of project. So that's what I meant by this is kind of a pseudo fourth kind of collection that Lightroom never had before um, Lightroom 4. Now, if I go in here, I want to test something here. If I go in, I don't think I've done this yet. Can I drag into? Yes, I can. So I can drag a photo that I have not used into that book project and then have it take me to that book project and it will uh, show what, you know, show the ones that were used and how many times they've been used. So I've added this new photo to the collection, but it has, it has no number over it. So that means it has not been used yet in the book. And I can drag that in to the book and now it's been used once. So that's how the um, book feature, slideshow, web, all those work now when you create a saved project. It kind of creates a kind of a pseudo collection for that particular project so that you can know which pictures you've used and uh, know how often you've used them and add more without having to figure out, you know, adding them to some other kind of collection that you started with. So that's a quick look. I hope it was quick uh, on how to use collections in Lightroom 4. Hope you benefited from that. And thanks again from uh, Scott Dolan for the suggestion. And we'll keep using all of those suggestions that poured in. Uh, for future episodes. Thanks again. My name is Terry White and thanks for watching.